The PlayStation 5 Pro. The $1200 discless console. It comes with a power cable, DualSense controller, HDMI cable and USB-C cable. Plus little feet for lying it horizontally. If you want a disk drive, you can buy that separately. It's the same one as the PS5 Slim. And scalpers have been buying these up. Hence why this open box was the only one I could find. Unclip the bottom cover and attach the disk drive. It comes with a new side panel with built in eject button. It first needs to be registered to the PS5 before it can be used. Here are the original, the slim and the pro models. The Pro being a similar size to the original PS5 is pretty impressive. The four individual side panels are clipped on pretty tightly. It almost feels like I'm breaking something. The M.2 upgradable storage slot is revealed after removing one Phillips head screw with mounting holes for all M.2 drive lengths. Something uncommon on consoles is a user accessible CMOS battery. One Phillips head screw removes this metal lid to reveal the 2032 coin cell. Thanks to today's sponsor PCBWay. PCBWay are experts in printing custom circuit boards for your project or product but they also offer other premium manufacturing services to bring your build to life, including CNC machining with lots of different materials and finishes, sheet metal fabrication, including PEM inserts, welding and finishing services. All the latest 3D printing technologies with a large selection of material types and injection molding services with over 100 different materials to choose from. PCB way, prototype the easy way. I like how PlayStation changed the fan socket to contrast the fan connector, which will hopefully stop users ripping fan connectors off the board. Our first T8 security screw and we've spotted another repairability feature. Dot markings indicating the screw length. Three dots for long, two for medium and no dot for small screws. Four screws hold in the enormous fan. This one is a 1.86 amp delta fan. In order to disassemble any further, we have to remove Sony's warranty void sticker, which may not hold any legal weight in the States, but I'm unsure about Australia, so I'm going to try and preserve it. With a little bit of heat and alcohol, I managed to remove it unvoided. The 
the coin cell battery appears to be wired up to its own little board. The top heat sink is only held in place for some thermal putty. I'll unclip the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antenna cables. before unscrewing a thousand T8 security screws holding down the top plate. However, unlike the original PS5, there's a convenient individual cover just for the front port connector. Now you don't need to unscrew all those screws just to replace the front I.O. board. I'll flip the console over and remove the two screws holding down the bottom shield and power supply. The PSU is a 420 watt unit. After removing the centre panel, there's a Phillips head screw holding down the stylish Pro Fins. At the top of the centre panel, there's the wireless antenna. The front I.O. board is held down with four Phillips head screws and has a removable ribbon cable in case you damage it. You really want to make sure all the screws are removed before lifting the top shield off. As this thing is held down so tightly with thermal putty that you'll be convinced that you've forgotten a screw somewhere. Now the CPU bracket can be removed. along with the two final screws. Before revealing the PS5 Pro's APU with its 16.7 teraflops of power. The heatsink block has ridges milled into it. I assume this is to make better contact with the liquid metal. The underside reveals a whopping seven copper heat pipes running to two chunky aluminium heat sinks. The back of the board has the 16 gigabytes of DDR6 RAM, along with what I suspect is the two gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. I believe these are two 512 gigabyte memory modules with the other two on the reverse side, making up the two terabytes of onboard storage. I syringed up the overflowing liquid metal so I could reapply it evenly for reassembly. Okay, now we can play Ghost of Tsushima.